Teotihuacan. 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 Okay, got it. <clears throat> hey, I'm Rob from GTRpodcast.com, and I'm going to show you how to play this. This is a game for two to four players with separate solo rules, plays in about 120 minutes, is designed by Danielle Tassini and is published by NSKN Games. You control a force of workers, gather resources, worship and build to gain the most fame over three eclipses. We start with the board setup which starts with laying the board on the table. Now as we are looking at the advanced setup in this video, take these boards, these are the action boards, give them a shuffle, cover spaces two to seven on the board which covers the pre-printed boards that are used in the basic setup. Board 1 to 8 is printed on the board and will be in the same position in every game. Royal tiles have a key on the back and are marked A, B and C in the top left on the front. Put 1A, 1B and 1C tile on the three spaces of the palace board, board number 1. Randomly pick 6 brown technology tiles, these have a small number in the upper right hand corner. Place them on the alchemy board, number 5 in numerical order, left to right, top row first and then the bottom. Shuffle the decoration tiles, those with a symbol either side of a small arrow. Add four to this space on the decoration board, board number seven. Shuffle the blue discovery tiles and put one each on this space on board one, two, three, four and seven. The space on the board matches the symbol on the back of the discovery tile. Put three more on the first spot of the avenue of dead, two on the second spot and one on the third spot. The number of tiles needed is printed on each space. Also put some of each on the mark space on each temple track. The number of tiles required in a stack for the player count is printed on the board. Note the green temple has two places for discovery tiles. Also put three temple bonus tracks that have the symbol of each temple on the back at the top of each of the temple tracks in this space. This will cover the printed reward on the board that is used during basic setup. Shuffle the pyramid tiles, place three on the construction board, number eight. Put more on the pyramid grid as shown in the rulebook on page five for the player count. Put the buildings on the building row, leaving the left space open. Put the light calendar disc on space 0 and a dark calendar disc on space 10, 11 or 12 if playing with 2, 3 or 4 players. And that's the board set up, on to player setup. Give each player a colour identification token, 12 colour discs and 4 worker dice of the same colour. Each player puts a worker value 3 into the middle of the ascension wheel. Choose a random start player and give that player 1 cocoa. The player to their right will get 3 cocoa and all the other players will get 2 cocoa. Give each player a turn order token with their position on it. Players put a disc on zero of the pyramid track as well as the scoring track. Put one on the bottom of the avenue of the dead and one on the bottom of each temple track. This will leave the player with six tokens to use during the game. Deal four starting tiles to each player. Draw a random blue discovery tile for each discovery symbol showing and pair it with that tile. Each player picks two starting tiles, return the rest to the box. Players gain the benefits of these tiles which are shown on page 24 of the rulebook. Any discovery tiles gained can be kept by paying the cost in resources in the top left corner of the tile. For example, the tile on the left costs 1 gold, the tile on the right has no cost. A power up, this plus sign will increase the starting value of an unlocked worker die, increase it by 1. Players also move on the temple tracks as shown on the tiles. For example, the first three tiles let you move up on the green, red and blue tracks respectively, and the tile on the right lets you move up one space on any track. When moving up a temple track, gain the reward shown. On a major step, claim any discovery tile in that stack by paying the cost if it has one. If not, take the reward printed on the board. The star symbol is any resource, wood, gold or stone. The penultimate step gives you access to that track's end game scoring bonus. Only one player is allowed in the final space of each temple track. First come, first served. For technology tiles, gain during setup, put a marker on the lowest number technology tile but don't pay the cost in gold for the tile. You will still advance on the track shown on that tile space. For example, if you gain a technology tile during setup, add a token to the one in the top left and advance one space on the blue temple as that is the colour temple related to the technology in the first slot. And each technology you have will only trigger once each turn. Also, if during setup you happen to get two technology tiles, you only get to take one technology. The second tile will give you no bonus. Players place starting workers on value 1 on three different temples as shown on their starting tiles. For example, this player chooses from three action boards of those numbered 1, 2, 5 and 7. In a three player game, draw two starting tiles. On the first three numbers showing on those tiles, place three workers of the unused colour into the general area of those boards. For example, the three dice in the unused colour in this example were placed in the general area on board 5, 6 and 7. And in a two player game, do this once more with the other unused colour. 
A game is played over three eclipses, with players taking turns taking one action, either a normal action or skipping their turn to unlock all of their workers for free. Workers are considered locked if in a space with a thick border and a key inside, called worship spaces. Workers are unlocked when in the general area of the board. For a normal turn, a player will move one of their dice, but before they do that, they may pay three cocoa to unlock all of their lot workers. Workers are moved one, two or three spaces clockwise around the board, then they take one of three actions on that board. And the first of the three actions is collect cocoa. Receive one cocoa for each different colour unlocked die on that board, plus one. Keep the die in the general area of the board. For example, here there are two colours of unlocked dice, so moving a worker onto this board will give you three cocoa. There are two red dice which count as one colour and the blue die is locked and won't count. The second action is Worship, which is available on boards 1, 2, 3, 4 and 7. Move a worker die into the locked Worship space. Pay one cocoa to unlock another player's die if one is already there. Players either Worship to take the Worship action on that board, or take the Discovery tile, or pay one cocoa to do both. On this board, the player can pay one ward to pay for and to take the Discovery tile, or move one space on the green Temple track or pay one cocoa to do both actions, paying one wood for the discovery tile as normal. The exception is board one, the player must use the royal action first, they can't just take the discovery tile but may still pay one cocoa to do both actions. The third action is to perform a main action, but first you must pay one cocoa for each colour of unlock worker already on that board. For example, there are three colours of unlock dice, so taking the action here will cost three cocoa. There are two red dice which count as one colour and the blue die is locked. The worker is then moved into the general area of the board. Now when looking at the strength of an action, you can only take three workers into account, even if you have four workers on that board, and the action must be taken in full. Let's look at the eight action boards now. Board one, the palace, does not have a main action, only the worship action. Boards two, three, and four are the forest, quarry, and gold deposit. These are used to gain resources. After moving your worker, the number of workers you now have at that location determines the row you activate. The lowest value die you have determines the column. For example, here the player has two dice, so will use the middle row, and as the lowest value is a 1, they will use the first column, giving them 1 wood. Gain the resources shown, and power workers by increasing the die 1 point for each power up icon activated. And if you get to power up twice, you can power up the same worker more than once. Now while we're talking about powering up, if a die ever reaches level 6, it triggers an ascension. Move your disc one space on the avenue of the dead track. Set the die to 1 and move it to the general area of the board. Gain one of the rewards shown on the ascension wheel, either 5 points or 5 cocoa, or advance on any temple track. If you choose to advance on a temple track, you may pay 3 cocoa to move again on any temple track. Instead of taking one of these rewards, if you haven't already, you can gain your 4th worker, add it to the general area of board 1 with a value of 3, and gain 2 cocoa. Back to the action spaces and board 5, alchemy, gain a technology. If you have one worker, choose from any from the first row. If you have two or more workers, you can choose from either row. If you have one worker but it's power 4 or 5, you may choose from either row but you don't get to power up. Pay the cost in gold on the technology tile. Put a marker on the technology to show you have the ongoing ability on that tile. For example, this tile gives you 3 points each time you take the main action on board 5 and 6. And each player who already has a token on that technology will gain 3 points each. Advance one space on the relevant temple shown next to the technology tile. Board 6, Nobles, pay 2 ward and take the leftmost building from the main board. If using one worker, add it to the top row of the Nobles board. If this row is full, this action can't be taken with one die. If using two workers, place it in the second row or the first row if the second row is full. If using three workers, put them in the third row, then the second row, then the first row if they are full. Gain victory points shown on the covered space and move one space on the avenue of the dead track. And remember to use the power up action after, twice if you use the third row. I'll skip board 7 for now and go to board 8, construction. For each worker you have on this board, add a tile to the pyramid. A player must add at least one tile to the board. One is fully resolved before resolving the next one. Play on the bottom level of the pyramid by paying 2 stone and gain a victory point. Play on level 2 on top of an intersection of 4 tiles by paying 2 stone and 1 wood and gain 3 victory points. Play on level 3 the same way for 2 stone and 2 wood and gain 5 victory points. Finally, you can play on level 4 for 2 stone, 3 wood, and gain 7 victory points, but when you do, you move the white calendar disc to the black disc. Building on the 4th level of the pyramid will trigger the end game. After placing a tile, score 1 victory point for each matching symbol covered. If a coloured temple symbol covers a matching temple symbol, coloured or not, move up 1 space on that coloured temple. Remember to perform the power up action. Move on the pyramid track. After a player has placed all of their tiles, refill the supply. Back to the final board 7, decorations. Pay 3 gold, then take an available decoration tile. 
Get a discount of one gold for each additional worker you have on that location to a minimum of one gold. Put the decoration tile on the pyramid, starting on the outer four spaces and going into the centre. A player can only place if the surface is full under the tile and there is a decoration tile on the previous level of the pyramid. When placing, the arrow should point towards the middle of the pyramid. Score one VP for each matching symbol covered. If a coloured temple symbol covers a matching temple symbol, move up one space on that temple. Score three victory points and move on the pyramid track. Perform the power up action if earned. After the last player has taken their turn, move the white calendar disc one space and play continues clockwise. An eclipse is triggered if the light calendar disc moves onto the dark one. And if he reaches the dark disc on the final player's turn, just play one more round. Otherwise, play to the final player, then play one more round, and then score the eclipse. Each player scores the lowest number revealed on the building row on the main board times their number of steps on the avenue of the dead. For example, the player is up two spaces on the avenue of the dead and the lowest number revealed is five, that player gains two times five, ten points. The player or players furthest ahead on the pyramid track score four points. All players score four, three or two points per step on the pyramid track for the first, second and third eclipse in the game. Reset the pyramid track, this is the only track that resets. Score sets of up to seven different masks on blue technology tiles. Points are scored as shown on this table. For example, if you have four different masks, you score 10 points. Multiple sets can be made with each mask only used once per set. Pay one cocoa per worker and pay one additional cocoa for each worker you have at level four or five. For example, if a player has two power three and one power four worker, they will pay four cocoa. And a player will lose three victory points for each cocoa they can't pay. Reset the light calendar disc to the beginning of the track and move the dark disc back one space after each eclipse. And in a two or three player game, repeat the setup process for moving the unused workers to different locations on the board. After the third eclipse, or an eclipse triggered by placing the final pyramid tile has been scored, the game will end. Players in the final two spaces of each temple score the relevant end game scoring tile. For example, this tile gives you 15 points. And the player with the most points wins, with tiebreaker going to the player with the most cocoa. And if there's still a tie, it goes in turn order with the player with the lowest turn order token winning the game. And that is how you play this particular game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it, and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find my Twitter at JTR Podcast to find my blog at JTRPodcast.com. I've been Rob, aka Jester the Rogue. Until next time, keep on gaining cocoa.